Welcome everyone. Today we are going to learn everything about the Scourge, our main enemy in the Wrath of the Lich King Classic from Platinum WoW. In World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King Classic, there are a plethora of different enemies trying to kill you, obviously, but the big bad Lich King and his mindless Scourge are easily the most formidable threat you'll face in this frozen wasteland. Yeah. I mean, his name is literally on the box. But this faction True. of undeath is more than just fumbling zombies. From formidable liches to malevolent vampires and death knight warlords. You know what's like interesting about the Scourge? I freaking love them so much in Warcraft 3. Like when I first got to play them and when I was like playing the campaign, I was like the good paladin Arthurs. Then I got like freaking corrupted from Frostmourne. Then I joined the Scourge and everything. Like it was so cool and interesting to play on an undead faction. But one thing freaked me out so much in World of Warcraft and that is the ghouls. Like the ghouls back in the day in Warcraft 3, they looked like actually raised humans, right? But if you look at like the, the ghouls now in World of Warcraft, they look like freaking uh, duck people that were raised or something. Like the, their whole appearance and they're wearing like so much leather now and stuff. Like, I don't know, maybe before they, they were raised, they had some leather fetish and stuff. Like in retail, they have even tons of leather belts on them. Like the way they like change some of the Scourge units over time and how they look in World of Warcraft is really fascinating, guys. Like seriously, like when I first saw the ghoul in World of Warcraft, I was like, that's a ghoul, really? It looks so different, like a whole different model. But yeah, it's 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 actually cool how they involved sort of like <laughs> a lot has changed from back in the day. And by the way, guys, if you're new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more MMO content. But this faction of undeath is more than just fumbling zombies. From formidable liches to malevolent vampires and death knight warlords, the Scourge has a little bit of everything to turn all of Azeroth into a rotten wasteland. My name is Platinum Wow, and let me give you my interpretation like of the most Arthur important here. enemies you'll face in Northrend. Looks so cool. I think that would have been so cool. Let, let's have a look at this one, one second, guys. So, is this like a how they wanted the death knights to look like. like imagine you had like a death knight. They had like a very skeleton like face. Or if you could do this on a forsaken. Where you get like a, a bony face that would be so cool i hope they do this one one day to forsaken where you can show even more bones where you're like a half skeleton or something like literally and i don't mean just the elbows and the knees like we have now but like even more bony imagine having a skull face let's start off with one of the most iconic types of death foes knight. who lead these zombie forces liches Liches are powerful necromancers who are in a league of their own when it comes to their dark magic. In life, these spellcasters devoted themselves to necromancy and would stop at nothing in their thirst for power. The most iconic and powerful lich is Kel'Thuzad, who in life proved his worth by pledging his soul to the Lich King oh, yeah. and formed the Cult of the Damned. I mean, how can you expect a guy with a name as evil sounding as Kel'Thu freaking Zod to not praise some so dark master? Anyways, yeah. he helped spread the plague of undeath across eastern kingdoms, but would ultimately perish at the hands of Arthas. You know, before <laughs> he went crazy and turned into the Lich King. Unfortunately. But death means little to a practitioner of necromancy like Kel'Thuzad. Your petty magics are no challenge to the might of the Scourge. Later, he would be raised into a powerful Lich for his service to the Scourge. A fitting new form for a devoted worshipper such as himself. Oh yeah, and the blood of Satan pledges to it. a darker power <laughs> in order to become a lich is commonplace among. I feel like Kel'Thuzad is the most hated uh, person by the blood elves, formerly known as high elves. Like they were freaking, like they were even corrupted with like fell and stuff. Now they are cleansed and like a lot of stuff happened, but like they really hate this guy so much. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually crazy. But one thing surprises me though. Like they had to use the sun well to raise Kel'Thuzad into a lich. But there are liches in game you encounter and they didn't use the sun well to be raised. Like this confused me always. Why Kel'Thuzad needed the sun well to become a lich but you can encounter in game liches that didn't. You need the sun well. 
Like this confused me, I never understood it law wise. If anyone understands this, why Kel'Thuzad needed the Sunwell to become a lich versus the other liches that just became liches uh, in another way. Like please let me know in the comment section because this is really mind blowing. I don't understand it today. I tried to research it but I couldn't find anything. As himself, these grand pledges to a darker power in order to become a lich is commonplace among the Scourge. Yeah, there are For many, example, but why is The second boss different? in the dungeon, Draktheron Keep, is Novos the Summoner, he had no who was sun, granted though. his lich form when he carved out his own still-beating heart and offered it to his master to show his unwavering devotion to the Scourge. Brutal. Another characteristic of liches are their phylacteries. You see, when you kill a lich, they don't die. Their souls go into their phylactery where they will recover and spawn once again. The only way you can kill one of these masters of necromancy it. is to destroy their phylacteries. Oh yeah, I quest like that. He defeated at the end of Classic WoW, but accidentally gave his phylactery to an agent of the Scourge instead of destroying it. And that is the lore reason why we're fighting him again. Wait a second, how, how did this actually get to the Scourge agent? Like, how did this actually happen? One one moment, let's rewatch this, because I also never understood this really. But accidentally gave his phylactery to an agent of the Scourge instead of destroying okay. it. And that is the lore reason why lucky. we are fighting him again in Wrath of the Lich King. So hopefully we can learn from our mistake and, you know, actually destroy his key to survival. Yeah, and, and figure out what we are giving to someone. But liches are not the only commanders of the Scourge. The Sand Lane are vampiric oh, undead elves. I wish they were an allied They've race. They're so cool. a multitude of horrific events on Northrend in the name of the Scourge. They deserve They've commanded a armies in the Borean spot. Tundra, held council with the Vrykul in the Fjord, raised monolithic flesh giants in Zoldrak, called forth the spirit of Archmage Arugal, and secretly disguised themselves as that one guy in your dungeon group who constantly goes AFK. Wow. The origin of these elves is when Kael'thas Sunstrider and his soldiers followed Illidan to the Frozen Throne to defeat Arthas during the events of Warcraft 3. Spoilers, but Illidan loses, and the members of his forces are slain, and some of these slain elves are then raised as Darkfallen, which are basically just undead elves. Oh, yeah. the ranger. These undead elves the also dark turned rangers. into vampires. Throughout your journey through Northrend, you'll slay many of these dark fallen, but during the Ice Crown Citadel raid, you'll learn that they are very similar to liches, in that death is totally inconsequential to them. Ha! Foolish mortals. You thought us defeated so easily. The Sand Lane are the Lich King's immortal soldiers. Now, you shall face their might combined! The ruler of the vampires is Blood Queen she has Lanithel, a cool model. who raised her vampiric followers to fight once more. Lanithel was once one of Kael'thas' followers, but now eagerly helps to command the Scourge. I think her model is really cool. She's like half gargoyle, half vampire, and like, I think this looks just so freaking cool. Like, I hope we see such a model again in the future. Or maybe she's still somehow alive or something. I think it's so cool. Forces on behalf of the Lich King and her Dark Fallen. Imagine you have a minion like that that you saw. Leaders, ambassadors, and accountants for the Scourge. Accountants? What, what do you mean constructing a giant <laughs> statue of me flexing? <laughs> flexing of the made of Serenite <laughs> isn't in the budget. You are fired. I guessed correct! I never watched this. <coughs> wow. I've saved the Scourge's most I've never dangerous even seen this weapon for last. The Lich King personally raised these warriors who in life showed great tenacity and in death would embrace their new existence as powerful members of his army. It's actually the backstory if you make a death knight. You are already a veteran, like a, a hero, known as a hero even, because if you've Okay, I don't want to spoil it, sorry, I stop here. If you guys want to enjoy the quest line, just do it. It's very, very fun for the Death Knight and yeah, we are all veterans as a Death Knight and I think that's freaking cool. Existence as powerful you have some backstory. If you RP, army. this is really good. All that I am, anger, cruelty, vengeance, I bestow upon you, my chosen knight. Like one of my favorite classes. I have granted you immortality. 
so that you may herald in a new dark age for the Scourge. The Death Knights learn to harness their new schools of magic to bring death to their living enemies. They have the ability to harness the powers of blood and bone to satiate themselves in combat and control it to bolster their defenses. So cool. They've learned to control the powers of... Like, I don't want to sound like a super fanboy here, but I have to say the Death Knight has one of the coolest class designs of all the playable classes. Like, I'm a big Death Knight fan, and I play a lot of Death Knight, and if you look at, like, the background of, like, a lot of those classes in, in WoW, like, some have very little background. If you make a warrior, for example, I mean, they try to fix this somehow in Legion, right, by giving, like, the order holds. But if you play a, a shaman or if you play a let's say warrior or even like a hunter hunter like it's so confusing because you don't like why are you hunter where do you come from where did you learn your skill and everything like everything is so mysterious and unknown and it's like completely random right like same with like warrior do you come from a certain clan what is your background from the class like the only classes that really have like a deeper background are death knight you could say somehow monk, right? Because you learned this from Pandaria and you have like there this kind of training place and you have some interesting uh, starting quest line. Um, you could say Druid, especially on the Night Elf, has like some deeper background, right? Because you could like with the scenario circle and like how Night Elves are practices of Druidism from like their culture and everything. So there's some backstory, Demon Hunter, yeah, and uh, definitely, definitely is like the coolest. But like a lot of classes in WoW have no explanation on how did you become this class, where did you learn this from, this and that. Like if you make a warrior, you're just at a random starting zone, same with if you're a mage, a priest. Like you're not from a certain cult or so, some sort of backstory. Like only the, the classes with the backstory are like those four that I just mentioned. They've learned to control the powers Even of rocks. Frost. Where do they you come may be from? Wondering, uh, how did they learn how it? How are they any different from... Frost mages. Well, frost mages just learn to harness the power of frost magic, but death knights literally are frozen to their core. It comes Ice from their flows body, right? through their undead veins, yeah. and they can inflict the same bitter cold against their enemies. And Isn't it the same with like paladins? Because uh, I think priests they channel from outside their body the light, right? And paladins apparently it comes from within them, if I'm not mistaken. So you can compare this sort of with like the, the, the first Death Knight, where it comes from within here too, right? So instead of holy uh, power, like frost power comes from within. Against their enemies. Yeah. And finally, they have learned to wield the powers of necromancy. Yeah, of unholy course, Death Knight. So with cool. a wave of their hand, they can spread infectious diseases, rot their enemies from the inside out, and Ugh. raise corpses death. into duck people. <laughs> <laughs> they look you like ducks, like let's be honest. Cover some of the other undead in the Scourge ranks that they undead can summon. Now, none of these have any particularly interesting characteristics, so uh, let's just go through them quickly. Ghouls, zombies, guys. Yeah, we're going through them, but look look at the face of the ghoul and look at the face of the, the regular zombie. Like, I think this should have been the ghoul model, in my opinion. I think that looks actually so cool with like those arrows stuck in it, right? characteristics so uh, let's just go through them quickly ghouls zombies geists zombies 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 abominations multiple zombies stitched together and plague <laughs> yeah. corruptors zombies but also filled with blight they look like race on their enemies Why am I the only one that thinks that the Death Knight starting zone has players destroy the Scarlet Enclave in the Plague Lands, and at Knight. the end of the oh. quest line, the Death Knights of Acherus are broken free from the Lich King's control and rejoin their former factions. But despite wrestling out of control of their master, Death Knights are still conditioned to be weapons of destruction, and must suffer the consequences, and take the Warlock's place as one of the most edgy classes you can play in the game. Probably the most harmful affliction Death Knights are wrought with is something called Eternal Hunger. You see, if a Death Knight doesn't inflict suffering or death on a regular basis, they will go through an immeasurable amount of pain and their psyche will break. I have a question, but this is a retail question, guys, if someone knows. What actually happens with those Death Knights raised by Bolvar? 
Are they also having the eternal hunger curse or not? And wasn't the eternal hunger lifted when Arthur's died or something? Like, I'm I'm very, very confused about it. And Blizzard never gave a part two to that, right? Like, yeah, I know when we are, like, doing the, the campaign and everything. And we are in the starting zone of the Death Knight. Like, we learn about this, right? About, like, we have eternal hunger, this and that. But isn't this currently why the Lich King is alive and we are under his control? What happens if we get freed? Like... I'm confused. What happens with Eternal Hunger? Did Blizzard just forget about it? Like they forgot about the sword that is stuck in Azeroth? Because the sword is still there, right? And they say in interviews, wait, which sword? <laughs> like it became a meme with the sword. But 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 what about like the Eternal Hunger? Is there like finally a conclusion? Or can't we just get a quest line where we get cleansed of this or something? Where we seek an NPC, he performs some magic or something and we no longer have this? Like just for RP reasons. Like... I would like to know if it's still in us, the Eternal Hunger as Dev Knights. Is it not? Is it just a WoW classic thing? What about those allied races that are being raised by Bolvar? Do they have the Eternal Hunger? Because Bolvar is not the bad guy, right? Like, he's actually uh, a good Lich King, you could say, sort of. Like, he even, like, helps us with Shadowlands and all that kind of stuff. So, I'm very confused about the new generation Dev Knights under Bolvar. Do they have the curse? What about us? Don't we ever get rid of that? What happens when Arthur's die? Is it not connected maybe with him? And why does not Blizzard give us a freaking questline or something where we get rid of that if we still have it? Because I'm pretty sure there are some people that would like to roleplay as a good death knight that doesn't have this kind of evil temptation to inflict harm. Their psyche will break, causing them to go on a blood-crazed murderous frenzy. Give him. Yeah, but if he's dead, how can he speak to us, right? But thankfully, those crazy death knights, they're working with us and will inflict that suffering on our enemies. What's their normal enemies? Right? Oh, he's coming right for me! Now, only the Death Knights of Acherus were freed from the Lich King's grasp. But during your adventures, you'll face Death Knights of equal power who still fight for their dark overlord. Yeah. So now that you know all about the Scourge's most dangerous foes, let's defeat them. Because out of all of the enemies you'll face in Northrend, the Scourge is the most important in World of Warcraft. Yes, and the most interesting faction. Of the Lich King. Classic. <laughs> Yo, let me give this one a thumbs up. Like, I really love the way Platinum WoW does those lore videos and his edits during them. Like, I love lore videos where there's a lot of uh, good uh, speech, right? Like, there are sometimes lore videos with just a few images, there are no animations, no edits, and they can be really good by creators. But what I love so much about Platinum WoW's lore videos is they have, like, those cinematics and all that stuff and the edits and... Like, it's so well put together always because it's also something visual to enjoy, not just by listening to it. And there's nothing fine with like, uh, like law videos where you mostly just listen or you have sometimes like a new image pop up. But I love this kind of uh, law videos a lot. And yeah, the Scourge is the biggest enemy faction in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. And it's actually interesting what you learn about them while you're questing and how you have certain enemies that you slay and they return later again and you are just like wait what a wait hold up i just killed that guy how comes he's back again like it's so fascinating right and i actually wonder what happens now with the scourge the helm of domination is destroyed what happens after shadowlands with the scourge like will we get the answer with dragonflight i hope we will but yeah guys, that's it for today's video. If you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. And let me know in the comment section, what's your favorite enemy faction in WoW? Mine is definitely the Scourge. And yeah, let me know. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time.